The honeybee apes mellifera, the most valuable insect to human beings, is suffering from many different problems in the last decade. Poor nutrition, pesticides, pests, you name it. But one thing in specific is considered by many, myself included, the biggest challenge to the honeybees today, the ectoparasite Varroa destructor. But is it really? Varroa feeds on the fat bodies of larvae and honeybee pupa, and it can be the vector of many different viruses that can cause many different problems. A good example is the famous deformal wing virus, or DWV, a single-strand RNA virus that is found everywhere in the globe right now. The name comes from its most famous symptomology, a twisted dysfunctional deformed wings, making these bees useless to the colony. It is undeniable that varroa destructor is a big problem in beekeeping today. There is an immense amount of data supporting that, and beekeepers able to control varroa properly have significantly fewer losses in their beekeeping operation every year. But here's the thing, we have been dealing with varroa for more than 40 years now, and I don't think we can claim any progress in this battle so far. I was talking yesterday to a beekeeper in the state of Florida, brainstorming about what can we do better, from the managing perspective to the research in the laboratory to help the beekeeping community out there. He asked me, Umberto, do you truly believe we can find a solution for Varroa to the point that we, beekeepers, will go back to the good old days when beekeeping was a little bit easier? It is so much pressure to keep Varroa loads down and any mistake we make, we pay a big price. How many more years are we spending on this? Maybe we should just give up and focus on something else instead. I'm very concerned about the future of beekeeping. I have to say that that question hit me really hard and make me think a lot lately and in this video series I want to speculate a little bit. I want to share some of my personal experiences in the field and talk about some research articles that might make us reconsider where we should be focusing on. I'm Umberto Boncristiani and this is Inside the Hive.tv, the show that takes you into the world of bees. If you like bees and want to know more about them, please consider to subscribe and also hit the bell button so you don't miss a single video. Researchers working to find solutions to fight varroa infestations on honeybees were never able to isolate all the variables to the point that we can quantify for sure where the damage is coming from. For example, is it the varroa consuming the bee fat bodies and hemolymph that's causing the damage? Or are the viruses injected into the bees causing the damage by itself? Or it's a combination of both that's causing the real damage? Unfortunately, we don't have the tools to separate these variables at this moment and we need to keep an open mind and learn from observations from natural events. In 2012, Dr. Stephen Martins and collaborators published a study on Science magazine showing what happens to a honeybee virus population when varroa mite arrives for the first time. Hawaii was a very special place on earth to do honeybee research for a long time. Hawaii was varroa free until 2007. The introduction of varroa destructor, this new pest, allowed researchers to follow the progression of the infestation over the years in those islands. Right after the arrival, beekeepers recorded the collapse of 65% of untreated colonies. Also, beekeepers and local pest control agents 
notes that the disappearance of feral colonies from all the urban areas. The arrival of feral destruction in Hawaii was a total disaster. Researchers started to screen honeybee colonies to see how the virus population would be affected by the introduction of this new dangerous pest. In varroa-free areas, researchers could find something very interesting. The first thing they noticed was the presence of many different viruses in these honeybees, including the formal wing virus, and the bees were apparently immune to them. However, with the arrival of varroa mite, a drastic change in the prevalence, load, and diversity of the former wing virus happened. In varroa-free areas, the former wing virus was found only in 7 to 14 percent of the colonies, but it increased to 70 to 100 percent in areas where varroa had been established. Also. Together with the increase in prevalence, the total load of the former wing virus changed from around 1,000 virus per bee to around 1 billion virus particles per bee. That's a lot of viruses. Here is another fact. When researchers look at the diversity of the former wing virus strains into the population, they found out that varroa-free bees had a higher diversity of the former wing strains, meaning there are much more strains of the former wing virus spread along the population. However, with the passing years, this diversity was gradually replaced by a predominant single virus strain. The varroa introduction induced the development of a super strain of the former wing virus, different from all other strains found in bees in the region. But here's the interesting part. When they look at other virus species like IPV, ABPV, KBV, or slow paralysis virus, none of them showing the same changes found in the former wing virus. So what can we learn from this study? The first lesson was clear. We could see that bees were fine in the presence of viruses, even the former wing virus, when Voro was not around. The second lesson was, we could learn that Varroa developed a unique relationship with the former wing virus, allowing this virus specifically to change, spread and replicate more. And this combination of Varroa and this new the former wing virus strain was lethal to the great majority of the honeybee populations in their island. What is so special about the relationship between Varroa and the former wing virus? The introduction of varroa mite in Hawaii was a very special natural event where we could learn a lot and we could kind of isolate one of the variables that we were talking about before. And we could learn much more about the varroa and viruses and how they cause diseases in bees. It is true that one of our variables was isolated, giving us some indication that varroa is responsible for the damage caused to the honeybees. However, the introduction of Varroa created a new deformal wing virus strain that we could not isolate in this case. Therefore, the problem is still, who is causing the damage? Varroa, the new deformal wing virus, or the combination of both? I really enjoy this kind of discussions because we can learn so much with them. This whole idea to make a video series about the interesting relationship between Varroa Destructor and the former wing virus is start with a fun discussion about the topic with one of my Patreons. If you want to participate in these discussions and help to shape the content of this channel, please consider to support me on Patreon. In future videos, I will continue to cover many research studies talking about this strange relationship between Varroa Destructor and the former wing virus. There are a lot of studies out there to talk about and I gotta tell you that things gonna get weird. For now I suggest you to click on one of the videos that are showing at the screen right now so you can learn more about what's going on with the bees. Thank you so much for watching Inside the Hive.tv, the show about bees. See you guys next week.